Hey, what's up, guys? David Glenn back for davidglennrecording.com and theproaudiophiles.com. We've got another question from my friend Ron over at themixacademy.com. He's a member over there. And uh, he asks, let's pull open his email as I stare at the screen. What am I doing? Uh, I'm going to pull open here. He says, uh, please go over your Kenny Joya method of creating a widening effect using a delay. I personally think that this technique sounds better than using something like the Waves S1. What do you think? Well, I think they're different, and it's funny you say Kenny Joya. I'm pretty sure he's mentioning that because I, uh, from time to time, I try to give credit where credit is due. And back uh, years ago, Kenny was the creator of a thread over at the Duck, the Avid.Duck forum. Uh, it used to be DigiDesign, and uh, he had a tips and tricks forum. We just threw all kinds of gems. You can still go check that out. I'm pretty sure it's still... Uh, all up there so we had a ton of us throwing in tips and tricks and stuff and uh, one of them that I remembered and I use all the time uh, was a uh, widening effect from using a mono to stereo delay and so I'm going to demonstrate that here you want to be careful with this one with phase and and checking it Uh, but uh, if you are a fan of checking a mono great if not whatever Uh, but this is just going to be another tool to add to your arsenal of tools and hopefully you dig it so we've been working with these stereo guitars but what i'm going to do now is i'm actually going to get rid of the actually let's play the doubled sound so this is an actual set of doubled guitars right here this clean so it was tracked once tracked again a little bit of differences between the two create that cool chorusing effect a little bit of modulation between them naturally from uh you know, the strings being hit at a little bit of different time, a little bit of different resonance from them. Let's say that we were only dealing with one guitar, but we wanted to create the effect of having two. A couple ways that we could do that. We can come in here. We could duplicate this track. Let's go ahead and do it that way first. Duplicate everything about that track. So now we have an exact duplicate. We could break it, come in here, zoom in, and just shift it a little bit and listen to that. Okay, and then depending upon how far you shift it, you can go a little bit further, that'll increase the width of the effect. And then now we've kind of got a 30-second, 16th note vibe going on, so pull it back a little bit more. And uh, that's one way, so you can actually break it and slide the audio over, a duplicate of it. We're going to try it a different way. I'm going to make that inactive. And what Ron was asking about was the mono to stereo delay effect. Let's just grab the stock delay. Remove the effect afterwards, no big deal. All right, and so now we have a left and a right, and we're going to make this work here. So we've got 250 on the left. I'm going to make that 35 milliseconds, and then on the right, I'm also going to do 35 milliseconds. I'm going to set the wet percentage of the left to zero, so it's, in essence, not affecting the left side at all. But then the right, we're going to have that 35 second uh, millisecond delay. So let's hear that. Uh, pan down the middle and see what we get. Cool, so pretty similar, right? So now we've taken a mono source, given the impression of stereo, not quite as, um, I don't want to say valuable, beneficial, doesn't sound as good. I, you could argue any of those, uh, depending upon what you're uh, going for, but it's different. It's another way to look at it, and very basically there's that. Now you could also get in here with say like an MSEQ. Something I do quite often would be to come in and uh, put this in MS mode and then drag down the center band here. Let's go to, uh, where is it at? There's that, let me right click and go stereo placement mid and let's suck out some of the mids from this effect. So we've created kind of this like hollow type sound if we bypass it. Just another thing you could do to it, all kinds of stuff you can add to it. But uh, at its very core, there's that effect. Um, You may also try sending into this effect. So let's create a new, let's create a new mono aux. And we're going to do that same delay. Pull it back in. We're going to send this to all effects. We're going to create a new bus. We'll go call it 
plus 25. Being all particular, I'm going to name it. We'll call this uh, KG Spreader. How about that? What a name. Okay, so the KG Spreader is there, and we can come send this to the KG Spreader. Pull it up, and uh, like we talked about with our other video, we can take and set this to pre-fader. So now the signal is going to go into the spreader. Let's be all OCD here and label it. We're going to solo safe it. And now let's take a listen. So we're not going to hear any of this dry track, the original. We're just going to hear the effect send. Okay. So if you wanted to, you could pull that back down. Get your dry signal rocking here. And then you could blend some of this delayed signal. Versus the original untouched track. Cool, and then don't stop there. I, uh, I love to come in here and add other effects, so it may come in and uh, put an EQ after this effect, take out some of the top end, maybe take out some of the stuff down low, maybe cut a little bit of the mids where the vocal lives, just make sure nothing gets real um, messy there. Let's add a little bit of grit. We've got this new Waves Butch Vig thing that's been, uh, been a blast to work with, and I'm going to throw just some distortion saturation into it. Pull up a little bit of each. I'm doing this quickly. I'm going to cut some of the highs out of that, and let's see what we get. So there's the original. Let me come over here and send it. Sorry, guys. I'm moving quickly for you. I want to try to sneak a few things in here. One more time. So that's kind of cool. Depending upon the song, that might be a good deal. And then we're send to uh, send to that gyno hall that we talked about. So now we're only sending the spreaded signal to this gyno hall. It sounds pretty sweet. And you don't have to stop there. You can come in here. Ah, I'm having some fun. Let's do one more. Let's go to uh, one of my favorite effects is the plug and mix tremolo pan. So let's create a little bit of movement with this. Let's keep the width um, down. Let's do a vertical movement and let's see what we get from that. Let's sync it to the track and go maybe a quarter note or something. Yeah, that was a dotted eighth. Let's go just a quarter. I missed it there. Maybe a triplet. Maybe a sixteenth. And just back off the depth a little bit, kind of a subtle thing, could be cool. And that we're doing this all out of context with the mix. So you always wanna make sure you get out of solo and uh, see what it sounds like in the track if it's helping the song. But uh, there's a few tips for working with some sins, working with that uh, KG spreader I'm calling it. Thanks to Kenny Joya for hooking us up with all of the great stuff he shares. And I uh, give a shout out to him. And then thanks, Ron, for the question. Go check out themixacademy.com if you want more exclusive tutorials like this. Uh, we got a forum. We got all kinds of stuff. Just 27 bucks a month. Start to finish mix videos. You gain uh, access to the multi track so you can mix it and use it for your resume to build up a sweet portfolio. More of that over at themixacademy.com. Thanks again, David Glenn of the proaudiofiles.com.